All right, our next article comes to us from PCGamer.com. Speaking of, Speaking games, of gamers. <laughs> yeah. But this one's not necessarily game related, but at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was wait I was like, maybe there's something I missed well, in what the What is article. PC Gamer doing? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, this headline is why this browser is valued at one point three billion dollars. And I assume we're <laughs> talking about Netscape? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mosaic. Let's, yes. let's Links. See it. Oh, yeah, the Lynx browser. Yeah. All right, so what can so, so this is a, a browser that has not yet been released. Correct. Uh, has not made a dollar yet. It's valued at one point three billion. Obviously, that's, does it yes, even exist? That's a startup valuation based on funding they've gotten. But but what are people so excited about about this browser? All right, so a couple of things on this one. First off, we haven't said the name, right? So it's yeah. called the Island Browser. So Island is the name of this one. Uh, it's a web browser that is being designed focused on security. So it's considered a enterprise web browser, not for home users, but for businesses that are looking to have secure web browsing experiences for their employees. Because this, this is the browser they use on Epstein's Island. Uh, <laughs> that is a good question. I'm guessing not because see, I uh, thought it had a face tattoo <laughs> and a bad, poor, like poorly done Jamaican accent. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and get the the hairs yes. braided for. Yes. Yeah, all right. There you go. Um, so you know, it's it's interesting because it, it's got this idea of security, which a lot of people are hot to trot on. And then if there's one thing I've learned about venture capital funding, it's that. If your product doesn't exist, it's worth a lot more. So this one is valued at $1.3 billion. Uh, there's absolutely no way a secure web browser or a company that makes a secure web, secure web browser is worth anywhere near this. Now, when I first learned about it, uh, I just brushed it off because new web browsers pop up all the time. But I kept hearing about it over and over. And then this $1.3 billion valuation comes out and, and you have to start wondering, like, oh, what are they doing? So I dug into it because obviously you're thinking, well, they had to have created a browser from scratch to make it secure because web browsing is not secure by default. Uh, but no, it's, it's based on Chromium, just like damn near everything these days. So they've, they've forked Google's open source Chrome engine or rendering engine and wrapped security features around it. And that sounds like smoke and mirrors because it likely is. I think this will be Isn't like a... Isn't that brave? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Well, so, brave is free, correct? Brave is free. Absolutely okay. free. Just what they're sure. leaning into here, though, and, and they, they kind of highlight it on their webpage if you try and get through the marketing speak, which is pretty hard, um, <laughs> that that their goal is providing network administrators the tools to secure the browsing experience. And so what I think that means is that it's manageable like through group policy. I was about to say, we don't have group policy? So we, we do if you're on a Windows machine. Which is Edge, which is a Chromium-based browser. That's correct. Correct. Okay, just but following the math here. What if you're a all-Mac network? Does Edge not run on Mac? Uh, it does, but then you wouldn't have group policy. You can't, you can't mm -hmm. uh, hook Macs into Active Directory? You can bind them to AD for authentication, but you can't do can't GPS. Do okay, nope. okay. And so they, you know, they... They're promising that there's all these features for securing the browsing experience and sandboxing it, keeping your data safe so that drive-by websites aren't able to, to lift your employee right, right. data and so on. Uh, so it's it's saying that it's got some amazing features, but Daniel, you're exactly right. Like Brave does a lot of this stuff, and, and honestly, standard browsers do it. So I wanted to get your your opinion, Daniel. Like if, if you were to design a secure web browser, uh -huh. what does that even mean to you? Like, what, what would make a browser secure? So, what makes a browser secure is that it doesn't run any, like, active content. Like, all you could do was would be run static content. Here is HTML. It doesn't do any kind of dynamic rendering in the background. So, no JavaScript, JavaScript is out? That is pissed gone. No. HTML5 is okay, yeah. though? Um, I don't know if HTML5... I mean, they're, they're, again, as long as it's not active content. So HTML5 okay. coding your a static site that doesn't do anything other than give you basically text and maybe some pictures or something would be okay. But if you get it to do things, animations. Like run Doom. Right, yeah, run Doom. Yeah. Flash? And, no yeah, flat. Flat. You got to have Flash. <laughs> you got to have Flash. I mean, okay, yeah, man's got to draw a line in the sand somewhere. <laughs> Right, I can't. If I can't yeah. flash security, well at what cost? Turn the damn thing <laughs> off at that point, right? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that that's the problem with like browsers is they they actually run code that gets sent to them from web servers, hmm. and if that code is malicious, then it's going to run that malicious code. We try to put you know uh, security controls around that. Do we trust this type of content? Do you get a pop up that says, "Hey, you're trying to run X, Y, or Z. You're trying to go off of this website and go somewhere else." There's all these things, but. That's nothing proprietary to this thing. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking Shark Tank here, or the ball-headed guy, Kevin O'Leary, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's going, wonderful. Go there ahead. doesn't seem to be anything proprietary about this. What would yeah. stop a competitor from spinning up another one? Right. Like, so that's, yeah. that's where I would go with this. 
And and this is they they're a startup. You know, this is the a product that they're creating in theory from scratch, but it is forking technology we already have access to. Uh, you cannot get a demo, and it is targeted to enterprise only. So this is going to be like Silence, right, where yeah. a regular home user can't buy it. But if you have a hundred thousand machines, yeah, they'll talk to you on the phone. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. I suspect a year from now, I'm going to do a prediction here. Yeah. A year from now, either they're still not going to release this browser, or they'll have already passed on. So, and I will predict that if they still haven't released the, the browser, the valuation will be higher. <laughs> That's probably S true. Question yeah. for you, Don. Who is valuating these things? Uh, Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, she is <laughs> the founder of this one. So she just her yeah. own valuation? No, she's so, a Theranos <laughs> one. Yeah. Peter is, is right that it's based on the amount of money that investors have already put in there. So they have raised $115 million. That's, that's money that people have invested in okay. it. And then and they've for, given out what ten percent of the company or whatever it is for a software technology yeah. company right now they're valued at a ten times multiple gotcha. and so that's how they so there's a up standard algorithm for this yeah thing. yeah okay, gotcha. yeah it, it's a bullshit algorithm but it, it is standard okay. yes making sure I'm on the same page <laughs> yeah I mean it's how they determine you know before they do their their IPO all right yeah, what are we yeah, going to yeah. sell this at based right. it's yeah. based on on history so yeah I mean I, I get the argument that it makes sense that it's weird to have a company using the same version of a software that you know that grandma uses at home you know chrome or whatever like there there should be a business one I mean, just and and it could you know yeah i mean you you kind of have that with with companies you used to say you know at our company you have to use internet well, explorer because and, that's what and works then in, in our most systems. shops correct me if i'm wrong don is that we build an image for our pcs or we have uh, some sort of technology that pushes images out to something like a thin client or a dumb terminal and in that is a configured browser, and it could be any browser I like, and it will sure. be configured on every single desktop, just like I like it. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. So I don't see the need for this, honestly. Maybe. Or they're, we're just not knowing something about it. I, you know, let, let me give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe yeah. they've got something where, like, I could go to any computer, yeah. download the island browser, and log in with my account, and it's secure and configured and, and all that. Because, like, you mentioned JavaScript. Can, right? can I do that with Chrome? Have you, well, yes. not really. <laughs> so with, with Chrome, Home, if I log into it, it starts caching all sorts of my information locally, right? Mm. So I would I would never okay. log into Chrome on a hotel computer. Gotcha. Right? Mm. But if they could give you a secure browser environment where it's truly sandboxed, all the data stored on disk is encrypted, where right. it was safe enough for you to log in on a hotel computer, like that's interesting. That would be impressive. Yeah. I can't imagine they'll disable JavaScript because it have you tried that recently? Oh, yeah. it, it breaks it, the it, internet. Nothing works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you've ever fooled around with anything like Oh, I've fooled around with a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, I know you have. Uh, but <laughs> if you if you like spin up Tails or Hoonix or something like that, or even some of the pen testing that have some security features, <laughs> the they have JavaScript in it disabled yeah. and you're like, ah, this this site this sucks. Has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well be in Netscape. Yeah, you're in Links. <laughs> like, I'm in Links again. My internet is back to 1999. <laughs> I like it. Hey, but you are safe as hell. You're super safe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Except for the phishing. Yeah. That's you, still there. you still click the link. You yeah, still you, go. you can still yeah. give yeah. out your information. Yeah. The humans are still involved. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, we have noted Don's prediction. Uh, we will bring it up at the end of the year again when we look at predictions and uh, and into next year. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.